Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how I've painted the latest addition to my Mentors Legion. It is the Venerable Dreadnought. So to start with, I primed the model ready for painting. Primed the main body and the guns in white and the left arm in black. Next, I took lead belcher and I started blocking all of the areas that are going to be silver. So that's all of these inner working parts of the dreadnought, all the bits that are not armour. Any bits in the smokestacks or exhausts the parts of the armour or the parts of the model that are in the middle and the hip joints I also painted the entire left arm in silver so I've recently been inspired by the look of Death Watch I think they look pretty cool I've got a Death Watch codex and as I've said in previous videos with these guys they go in any army well, the idea of this legion is it can go in any army so what I've done is I've gone back over the models that I've previously painted and I've painted all around silver I think it looks pretty cool play a lot of Xenos in my gaming group and we are planning on doing a crusade uh, later in the year so I'll probably use these guys as Death Watch once all the silver was dry, it's time to give it a bit of a shade. So I used Basilicanum Grey. And I'm going to use this to paint over all of the areas that I've current just painted silver. So this is going to shade it, this is going to put some shadows in the recesses and give it a bit of depth. At this point, start to be careful to not get it onto any of the white or any of the areas that I'm going to eventually paint green. I'm just looking to stain and shade all the metallic areas. I'm going to give the entire arm a coat of this, all the inner working parts and the armour parts. And when I get to the dreadnought itself, I'm going to take care not to get it on any of the white. But mistakes will happen, we'll tidy that up later on. Once all that was complete, I highlighted it with Necron Compound. So take dry paint and a dry brush. This one is my Artisopi small brush. I'm going to get an extra small brush because these brushes are really cool. But I go around all the model, catching all the raised areas, and all the edges, flicking the paint over it quickly, just to give it a highlight. The more times you pass over it, the brighter it becomes. So you get quite a lot of control. You can have it dull, you can dry brush it a lot, make it look really bright. It's up to you. So once the first shade and the highlight was dry, I then took Agrax Earthshade and I wanted to make a difference between the silver armour panels and the silver of the working parts of the Dreadnought. So this Agrax Earthshade is to represent oil and grime in all of the working parts. So all of the pistons and the joints that would be moving, I went around and I just Hit certain areas that I think would be full of oil. On the arm itself, I painted the, the elbow, the mechanical joints, the battery packs, but I left the armor plating 
as if it's purposely painted silver and polished. And same on the guns, painted the power packs, painted the working parts of the gun. Once that was complete, I then tidied up all of the white. So using a thorough grey, I went around these little areas here where the dry brushing had got onto the, to the white uh, under here. Just working around the whole model, tidying up all of those areas. And this is getting it ready for the next stage of shading and highlighting the white. Once all the tidying stage had been done, it's time to start shading it with Apothecary White. So this contrast paint is really good. There used to be a time where you would see a white army in a white dwarf or at a tournament or an event. You'd be really impressed. If someone done a white scar army, you'd be really impressed. You know? Now, painting white, since the introduction of the contrast paints, in my opinion, is really easy. You spray it white, you put the contrast paint on it, and then you highlight it, just as easy as any other colour. What the contrast paint does is it knocks it back just slightly to taking it to an off-white, gives it a slight grey look, but it's enough that you get some shading in the recesses, and then when you go over it with your highlight, your white highlight, the white highlights actually show up. There used to be a time where people in the past would water down various different greys, or they would try and line highlight with Oh, sorry, line, line in the shades with a black and it always looked a little bit odd. Here on the next stage I used the Paraxi White and you'll see what I mean. Once I start to dry brush this up you'll see how it stands out and the, say, the off-white shade of the contrast paint makes it look really good. So that's a nice clean crisp white done with a spray of white, a, one layer of contrast paint and then one fine dry brush on top. Really simple. Just be careful. I didn't want to get it on any of the silver. I didn't want to undo any of the work I've already done. So I was quite careful on my way around. With the white done, it's time to move on to green. So I mix Caliban green with contrast Dark Angel green. So for the, those of you who watched my drop pod video, in it I explained how I was having trouble painting the flat areas of the drop pod with the contrast green. It wasn't going on very well and it was, being, it was very streaky and it was patchy. So a friend on a, a Facebook comment said to me to mix the two together. So that's what I've done here. Mix them both together. Uh, one third Dark Angel Green, one third Contrast Green, and one third of the Contrast Medium. And the mix that I've got goes on very nice. So it kind of keeps the properties of the Contrast Paint, as in it's really thin and watery, with a high pigment, it goes on nice and smooth. But it gives me more control then using the contrast paint alone. The base paint mixed into it seems to thicken up enough that it just works really well, really, really nice. So this is the way that I'm going to be painting the rest of this army. When I move on to the vehicles, I'll be doing this mix. Still takes two coats. You'll see in a minute. As this dries, you still get some of the white coming through but that's from using the white base coat so it's to be expected. Go over in a second coat 
and it gets rid of all the streaks and looks a, a lot more solid. after the first coat I'll do a second coat off camera so as I was waiting for the second coat to dry I took retro pajama and I started to paint the decorative panels all over the dreadnought so you've got little armor panels full of place names and these are battles that the dreadnoughts fought in wanted to be really thin so I used two coats didn't want to go too thick, didn't want to obscure any of the detail, it's really fine. You can't really see it when it's all painted white, but as you start to get the shades on it, the little lettering starts to pop. So I went on all of the armor panels that are full of the scripture, two coats of Red Scripturama, give me a nice even base. Once the green was dry, I started working on the base on the body of the model as well starting on the legs, give myself plenty of time before moving on to the top half. Then I'm going to have to be working on areas that I thought would be wet. Just repeating the same process for every panel. Go around with one coat, let it dry, follow up again with a second coat. We also picked out some of the scrolls and the iron halo just to make this guy look like he is a hero of the chapter. I always imagine virtual dreadnoughts are going to be they're going to be old terminators, maybe old captains, maybe old lieutenants who have died in battle. Next, I used niblet green dry paint and the same process as I did with the white. Get a dry brush wipe most of the paint off and start to work your way around all the edges layering up a small highlight of the lighter green. We like have said previously when you're dry brushing it's the idea of less is more. If you go nice and gently you can always add on layer after layer. If you go too heavy to start with and you just paint a, bit, a, a green line you sometimes have to go back one or two stages to correct your mistakes. It's always easier to build up than it is to try and take it away. Once the green was complete, it was time to shade the gold areas. Now that they've had time to dry, so I took Agrax Earth Shade slightly watered down and I just started to paint it into the onto all of the panels making sure it goes into all the lettering and stains all of the all of the gold into all of the recesses try and give it some shadows so later on we can build up some hair. The first stage of shading complete I took Cryptic Armor Shade Gloss which is darker and a finer brush and I went round and I 
painted it into all of the recesses. So where you've got the scripture here, with the fame brush, I'm just going to try and drop in small amounts of the Cryptek armor shade, just to make the writing stand out. come to these scrolls and I decided to just trace the top and the bottom of the scroll just to give them the once those two layers of shading were dry it's time to brighten it up so we take Sigma right and also I took Necron compound and I started to build up the layers of the gold brighten it up so start with Sigma right and a small dry brush from Army Painter get lots of control with these pointy brush. I started to gently highlight all of the gold areas. Just catching the edges of the gold, trying not to get on the silver, not to get it on the white. On the, the laurels and the gun barrel here, again trying to not get it anywhere else. And moving against the grain on all of these scrolls. A little bit more depth. So throughout this whole stage, I give it one pass with the gold dry paint and a second pass with the silver dry paint just to pick out all of the edges once that was complete it's time to paint the aquila in the center so using flash kits yellow air I carefully painted the wings and the body of the aquila so I really like using the air paints for the yellows it's not very thick couple of coats and later on shaded it with Agrax Earthshade once you get an even coat use the Agrax and use thin layers with a with sharp small brush to lay it down into all of those little recesses in the wings give that some time to dry I use Spirit Stone Red and this was to pick out the eyes I then use the Thorin Grey to go back around the eyes just to block in the red to get rid of any mess that I've made whilst painting the eyes. It was then time to use Hexox Pale Sun to highlight the Aquila. So again using my small dry brush, a little bit of paint, mostly wiped off, and then went against the green try and lay down a highlight across the wings of the eagle and across the body of the eagle. Next using Skeleton Hold, I painted all of the purity seals. There was only two on the model, one on the back, one on the arm. I went around and painted the purity seals and the cog on the top of the beauty seal and decided it was going to be gold I would usually do them some sort of pink or a, or a red um, this was a mechanical seal finally a little touch of gold on the skull hanging off the back next 
I took the technical paint, spirit, soul stone blue, and painted all the glassy areas. So that's the light on the top, that's the little targeter under the body. And then I took him off his base. And I used the base sponge. And I used Rhinox Hide and a tiny little bit on the sponge. Dab it off on a tissue. And this is to do some battle damage. So he's off his base because that's not the base he was ever going to be on anyway. Let's just use the base to paint him. And slowly, with a little bit of paint, dab round any areas that would be battle damaged and scratched. The sponge gives a random stippling effect of chipped bits of armor, chipped bits of paint, and it's a real quick, simple way of getting some battle damage on your marines. It doesn't take long to do at all. This is a bit like dry brushing, where the you build it up in small amounts. Again, less is more. If you just drown the sponge in paint, you get one big blob. Once that was done, he was glued onto his new base. I then mixed up some grey ash weathering powders from Forge World with some medium, a contrast medium, and I painted it into all of the bottom half of the model, just to represent dirt, dust, anything that would get kicked up. And there he is, ready for battle. One complete Vetimal Dreadnought. Again, this only took one evening to paint. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And I'll drop all of the links for the materials into the description as usual. And I'll see you guys next time.